What's up everybody, it's boy Mad Max back at it with a great another what if. This is part two of what if not for me was Iron Man. Not for me is chilling with the girl. You know what? Screw that up. My name is Nana. Nana was asking not for me like if he heard that sound. And not for me said yeah. It was a big crash and boom and thunder crackle. And as he's hearing this, the crystal glows and it reads on the screen. I like it reads since magical power surging from other source, other source, and it basically has the caution sign on it. And nothing's like oh shit. And as he's, you know, saying that he go, he's sort of running up there out of the um, cave. And he sees a big red cloud over a village and monsters coming out of it, attacking the villagers. So yeah, he basically taps the emerald and the emerald chooses the bear armor. It's sort of strong, but it's sort of strong, but it's sort of heavy. So yeah, and it has jets. So yeah. Not for me goes over there and he flies over there. He sees the village is being under attack and he also sees the bow hero and the sword hero. And he sort of thinks if they die I, I can gain their power and use it for myself. And as he's saying that the monsters are going at him. He's sort of just sitting there and he's killing monsters. And the wolf comes, and the wolf kills and eats monsters, and it's like a strong battle. So yeah, not for me at this point in time. It's sort of sitting there, like, eh, like what? I don't want to do nothing at all. So he's sitting there, and he's watching this um, sword hero and the um. And the um, bow hero fight the monsters and the guards with them too. When the guards had a magical crystal that basically was like a speed crystal. So Nafumi told the wolf to go and eat it. The wolf flew. The wolf basically blitzed over there and ate the crystal. And the crystal increases speed and everything. Now for me, is like when like what happened, and then as he's saying that he sees a big, 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 big man. You know, not a big man, but like a big beast come out, and he's sporting a giant crystal, like that, like sort of almost the same size as he has. At the base, it's sort of that big. Not for me. Is scared, but at the same time he's happy because he gets to add on to another one. And as the beast lands, it speaks. I am one of the four generals of Zagad. Zagad is a is a place where the other crystal came from. And one of the four generals is sort of, you know, I'm basically lit. I'll sort of let it explain itself along the way. One of the four generals of Sagad. And this is um, Zola. Zola is sort of ancient because it came from a different dimension. And his main goal was to come here and take it, and take this dimension by force. So yeah. So God is sort of sitting there, or standing there, watching as the monsters eat and kill humans. And Nafumi basically sees God, and he's sporting a weird logo. It was a... Um, sort of like a Asgardian logo. It was sporting that. 
nothing flies up to a thing. Hey, who are you? And the ginormous creature basically says, I am Zygod. And what do you want, pissed? And Nakhmi says, uh, um, hey, can I ask you a question? And Zygod says, yes, what is it? Where did you get that big-ass crystal in your chest? I was born with it, just like every general. And Zygod sees the weird crystal inside of Nakhmi's chest. Like, the arc reactor. He sees it and says, how did you get that, boy? It was born to me. It was literally embedded inside of my body. So Zygon at this point is pissed because like the only people who are able to have that is like royals in his world. So he goes and he sort of shrinks down. And in doing so, the monsters are key. Like the, the monsters don't attack him. Because he is their general. So I got basically shrinks down and to Nafumi size. And he goes over there and he punches Nafumi. He punches Nafumi directly in the jaw. And his metal armor. And that shakes his head. So I got is ripping off armor after armor after armor piece. Just so he can get that emerald. Because it's basically royalty in his world. So Nafumi is staggering, and he's staggering, and the wolf comes over there, and it and since it has, and since it has like a lightning beast inside of it, the wolf basically makes a red, white, and black thunderbolt crash onto Zygon, and uh, let's say. He is pissed. So I gotta go and he basically uses his big club that he that transformed with him. And he smashes and he does a smash at the wolf. You know what? Scratch that. He smashes the wolf and not for me sees it's like no and not for me doesn't really know but like Due to him, like, due to the wolf having the lightning beast, he can't die because it's a living lightning bolt. So, yeah. And the wolf and all the pieces, they come back together. And the emerald is sort of, it's, ch it's changed. It goes, and it basically goes to the wolf's neck. And as the... I mean, as I got it, is destroying that for me. The wolf gets back up and he howls out a lightning, fire, and shadow magic spell. And it hits I got directly in his weak point. Which is one of his back. I mean, his head sort of is. So, yeah. So I got is in pain as he's grabbing the wound on his head. And Zega is still sort of looking at the wolf and Afumi and he says, You both have tarnished the royal family name and he powers up a big ass attack. And he throws it at them both. Zyga so at this point of time is not okay. Not for me. Basically. Like, with the little power he has left, he goes and he flies behind his eye guy and he sees a pretty big, um, tick. And this tick is a sort of controller for magical creatures. And it changes them as well. Now for me goes and he uses the last little bit of power he has and kills the tick and falls on Zygot's shoulder. 
and let's say this guy got is freed from that weird tick and he's changing into a form of a monstrous size Godzilla so yeah Nafumi is on his shoulder and Zyga goes and he sees it and he picks up Nafumi and says I'm sorry and Zyga basically taps his stone and fixes Nafumi's whole armor basically and as Zyga is saying that the stone in Nafumi's lab it basically just teleports there at a wit speed and Zyga is standing right there in front of it and it basically is telling him to consume me and Nafumi is like what is that thing doing here it should be at the base Zyga grabs the crystal and it basically puts it inside of his crystal so as he's doing that the crystal basically grabs onto both of Nafumi and the wolf because the wolf has a little piece of the crystal inside of it and so does Nafumi. The wolf and Nafumi are both put in there and in doing so sort of made the wolf into a mechanical wolf. And Nafumi is looking around and he sees that god. And Zyga is going like, where are we? And uh, and the crystal glows and throws a giant beam of light at Zyga. Zyga basically gains all his old memories back. Yeah, he gains all his old memories back. And he's sort of saying, I'm sorry for attacking you. I won't leave. I will leave this place right now. And nothing is like, what happened? The crystal showed me your, the crystal showed me you and how strong you are. I would like to ask you one thing. And nothing says, well, what's up? Please take my power. And nothing says, like, hey, how? You're a giant crystal. You have a giant crystal inside your chest. And Zygad pulls out, like, a weird thing out of his back. And it is a crystal sword that basically uses magic. And it basically breaks time and space itself. Zygad basically throws it into the crystal. And he yanks out his own emerald and in doing so it f in doing so he falls and he falls inside the crystal and the crystal absorbs like god's body the crystal turns to a black blue and reddish color crap yeah he turns into a black blue and reddish color and it basically gains some knowledge of Zygot's abilities and everything. So, so they, so, um, they both fall out of Zygot's actual body. And his body shrinks down into an armor that has no head, but it has the crystal inside of it. So, yeah. Not for me is wondering, should I keep it? And the crystal goes and floats into the other crystal and it sort of absorbs the whole thing. And Zygon's whole literal body had magical runes on it, like ancient, super ancient runes on it. And now for me is one like what about the club? The club shrinks down to to now for me size and it basically it it you know it it sort of fuses with now for me's crystal turning into a black shattered like it's sort of like it grows. You know that smash that.
And that's for me. He grabs a spear and he's and it sort of shrinks to his size. And it does so uh, the sp the um club basically just turns into a armor arm like this dog Zilla's arm and it basically goes and fuses this Nafumi's hand. And that allows Nafumi to literally bend metal and lightning and, and control the weather. So the king, so back to the king. The king basically told the other um, mages to go and summon another um, heroes, like, like some more heroes or something. And it's sort of easy due to them having power. So yeah. And back to Nafumi. Nafumi sees this um, sword hero and the belly hero's crystals. And since they're dead, he basically grabs them and he throws it to the bigger crystal. And in doing so, the bigger crystal spits out one of the crystals that has merged. The spear hero and belly hero's crystals, they merged. And Nathami grabs him and is wondering like, what is this? And he sees the sign. It's a literal sword um sword arrow and as he's sort of looking at it his emote glows and it and and it feels like a natural feeling Nafumi puts the crystal up to his and the crystals basically like his crystal absorbs the other crystals so yeah Nafumi is sort of getting stronger over time. So, yeah. Now for me takes the crystal and the wolf back to the cave. He takes it back to the cave and he puts the crystal in a sort of upgraded version of it, of his container. And now for me is sort of rethinking. He's sort of rethinking it. If this crystal is actually Zygon and and my crystal, what if I and as he's saying that the girl wants down the nice nice pajamas that she made after all that. Yeah. She made some pajamas. And she's sort of doing it for Nafumi's little thing. Because he's been in battle and she wanted to please him. Nafumi is curious, like, why is she in pajamas? And how did she make it? So she's walking over there to Nafumi and she puts a uh, little hand on Nafumi's iron junk. And he squinches up and he's like, what are you doing? And he says, I'm your friend, right? I can be more than your friend. And at this point in time, she is pushing the boundaries. She is pushing it. Now for me, he's sort of scared because he sort of never did it with a girl his age. Yeah, he's a virgin. So yeah. Nafumi is, how do you say it? He's sort of okay with it. And as a girl is doing that, um, let's say another passage, like a passage, opens up that Nafumi didn't really put there. And the girl says, hmm, no fear, I didn't get time with him. Nafumi, as he's seen this, he goes inside the cave with the wolf. After taking off all the armor and putting the crystal back in his stronger hold, the crystal affected the environment around it and turning the literal ground into a mech. 
So yeah, the crystal turned the whole place where Nafumi stays into a giant ass mech. Nafumi goes and he goes to the cavern and sees something. It's like pods, like somewhat pods of healing. And he sort of remembers this anime. It's called um, Dragon Ball. And I'm not going to put Dragon Ball logic in there, but I'm, I'm going to take the Dragon Ball healing tanks. So yeah. Not for me. Yes, not for me. Basically goes and touches one of the healing tanks. And he turns around and sees a robot. It's sort of like a robotic body slash human body. It's sort of an android. It's an android. And he remembers the episode, the Cell Saga, and the Android Saga. So yeah. He goes over there, and as he's doing that, the girl walks in, and she sort of sees the other girl. And since the crystal t sort of took DNA from her and uh, Fumi, and it created a girl, it, it created a daughter, so went like, so yeah. Time skip. Yeah, I, I know you motherfuckers hate that shit. Time skip. Nafumi is 18. You know, not 18, but like, mm, 19. He's 19, and so it's a girl. And their daughter is four. She is four. Go going on to five later on. Not for me, as he's sort of in the cave, and since the cave's gotten bigger, he had to carve out another piece of the cave just so his daughter can stay. So, yeah. He basically just built another room with um, a workable shower, bath, and everything. Not for me, goes. As he walks up out of the um, under area of the cave, he goes outside and he goes to the grave of Gazo. I mean, is it, um, shit, I forgot his name, but like, um, God, Gazo, Zola. You know what? Godzilla. Yeah, I, I named him after him. So, yeah. What you I got against that, huh? I can't name him Godzilla. So Logan. Yeah. So look at it. So look at it's great. And he goes over there and he sort of goes over there and he places a hand on his very saying thank you, Guardian and General. And he sort of senses somebody. He senses somebody's watching. And this is a weird friend. This is like another, um, let's say that it's somebody from another kingdom. And not from the kingdom that he got banished in, like from an actual another kingdom. As he's walking away, he says, I know you're following me. Get out of the bushes. And the person walks out, and it reveals that it is a little, not a little girl, but like a, oh, not an old lady, but like a god. And this god is the forger god, who creates weapons for the gods. And there are two guys, as I said, the one who created the crystal, and one who sort of barbarians. So yeah, and that world is called Asgard, so yeah, I get it. I can't apply Marvel logic to this one too. So yeah, and the girl says, um, I'm a sphinctus. 
I create weapons for the gods, and I want someone, and I'm wondering, where did you get that? And she points to the arc reactor on Nafumi's chest. And he says it's a present from a friend. A friend, huh? I sense as guardian magic. Now tell me, who are you and what are you doing with that type of magic and power? And she and she rockets at Nakumi with a spear trying to cut his skin and due to his skin being tougher, it doesn't really cut that much. Nakumi is is one like why like this is my world's tech. And my world's magic, so you can't really have this. And she's sort of mad. Like, I want it. Give it to me. And Nakumi says, you know what? Go ahead, try to take it. And she grabs it, and she cleans it, and she couldn't pull it out. And she's stabbing at it. And she's stabbing at where it is. And his skin is not breaking. It's sort of like he's an android or something. Not for me. It's basically angry. Because, like, that little scratch near it, it sort of hurts to him. So, at this point in time, he's sort of angry. He goes and... He goes and... Taps his arm twice and revealing the Zillow's arm. And he basically goes and touches the girl. He goes and touches the girl's literal butt. And as he's doing that, like, um, um, his fingers basically screaming, rape, rape, rape. But, nah. No one's around here, not even Nafumi's daughter and his wife. So, yeah. Nafumi at this point in time is. Who? Uh, uh, uh. He's sort of not beating up the girl, but he knocked the girl out and took her back to where he was. At this point in time, his wife is in the room and playing with his daughter.